All right, today, this evening, or whenever you're watching, uh, we got a PS4 controller that uh, I'm just going to do a quick video. I'm going to repair the uh, thumbsticks here, and there's a problem here with one of the triggers. It's pretty loose, so I'm going to replace that. So, let's get started. I'm going to go ahead and take it apart here. things just lift apart once you get all the screws out and be a little tricky to separate it right at first this is a uh, first generation controller it doesn't have the little light bar in the uh, touchpad here Pull that ribbon cable out like that, set that aside, and take the battery out. This little tray right here, there's a couple little release tabs if you just pull that one up like that. And that one, push that to the side, and that'll lift straight out. We'll put that aside. And then we're gonna lift that tab and pull this out. The second gen controllers don't have this little tab here to lift up, it just pulls straight out like that one. And one other thing that uh, you will need to do is to unsolder the motors for the vibration. I'm just gonna those out of the way here. And then we can take the single screw out of the middle. lift that board out like that and first we're going to look at these I'll pull those straight off apparently there was a big issue with these first generations the rubber would come off and I got some new ones here These can be found all over the place. To be honest, I can't remember if I got these off of Amazon or eBay. I'll try to find that out and then put a link in the description. And then just push straight on. This controller, the uh, joysticks actually work very well. And so I'm not going to have to replace any of the pots or anything. Now, this is another story. I'll set that aside. The buttons on this particular controller were very squishy. And I believe that is due to the pads being worn out. Yep, as you can see, they're really pulled apart there. Especially that one. Which is okay, because I do have some replacements for those too. Like that fits good in there. I'll replace the one for the D-pad. It doesn't look as bad. Controller is a little dirty.
it does come with this one also so we'll just go ahead and replace it and as far as these go I know that one of these had a an issue it did not feel very good oh yeah the uh, looks like one of the little pins is broke off here as you can see yep right there that pin should not still be in there like that and it just lifts straight off and looks like these rubbers here were pretty well worn out it's got a little cut in there like the replacement fits good. And as far as this button goes, I'm just going to leave the original in there. But the R2 button, however, I do have a replacement for it. As you can see, plastic's there. I like to leave the controllers as stock as I possibly can. And these little springs here, they basically go around the uh, little pin like that. And then there is a slot that it fits into on here. Let's see if I can get this a little bit closer. Much better. Go ahead and take this one out. Be careful of these little ribbon cables there. Pretty delicate. I don't know if you can see it on the uh, camera, but there are two little holes in the plastic where the little rubber pins fit down in there, and that's kind of what holds it in place. Yep, you can kind of see it right there. All right, I'm just gonna reuse that button. There was nothing wrong with it. And just so the others match, I'm gonna use one of the new ones in place of that one there. And same deal with this one. The little spring is gonna go in that slot there. And I'll snap it down. Yep, everything else looks pretty good, so I'm going to go ahead and put it back together. You have to be careful of this little ribbon right there when you're going to put that back together. It should go through this little slot here in the plastic. I'm just going to put the board straight back, 
pay attention to this. Make sure the little tab is flipped straight up and then push it, push the ribbon in and push it down. I always look at the uh, little white line there as long as it lines up with where the little locking tab is, you know you have it all the way down. So that looks good to go. I'm going to put the screw back in there. And on the board there are markings for the red and black, the positive here, just like on this side, positive. Honestly, it doesn't really matter. It's just a motor that spins and vibrates. The, the weights are just offset, so it vibrates. This is the one that gives you the heavy vibration, and this is the light. Uh, it doesn't really matter which way they'll spin. They'll still work, so uh, that's one instance where it doesn't really matter too much if you get them mixed up. Again, these, uh, all these new controllers and electronics use that uh, lead-free solder, so that's why it doesn't look real shiny after you're done soldering. I could just wick all that off and put new solder on, but there's not really much sense in that for this repair. Looks good. Then we're going to put the battery tray back in. It just sits down in there. And I'm knocking stuff everywhere. Those new buttons came with new springs, by the way. And if your battery is dying, they do have replacement batteries. Amazon, eBay. I would just go by the ratings. I know a lot of batteries replacement batteries can uh, sometimes not be as good as the originals so I would just go by the reviews and uh, there is also a difference in between the first generation controller and the second this one the connector is a little bit different um, the second generation the connector is turned the other way and it's a little bit smaller so you might want to keep that in mind when uh, getting a battery for your controller. This one seems to be okay, so I'm just going to leave it. Although, these original ones, I don't know if you can see it. Uh, if I hold it at that angle, you might be able to. This is a, a thousand milliamp hour. You can get uh, batteries that are 1500 or even 2000. Can't really guarantee that they are what they uh, are rated at, but potentially you could have double the uh, life controller life if you upgraded the battery uh, there's another possibility too is if you got a battery for a uh, generation 2 controller you could also change the connector and uh, just cut this one off and solder the other one on uh, that's another possibility if you could find one that was uh, more capacity than this one the battery might be a little bit bigger so there are some plastic pieces in this tray that you may have to shave down like this here in here and on this side um, because this here is also in the corner so you may be able to go this way just a hair if it's a little bit bigger but probably be best just to 
find one with the same dimensions. All right, well, I'm gonna put this ribbon back in. And this one just goes straight down like this. It just pushes in. I say it just pushes in. Easier said than done. There it goes. And it's probably easier to put together than it is to take apart. Some of those clips were a real pain. I'll hit the PlayStation button and look at that, it's flashing, so it is working. The buttons feel way better. The triggers are good. So I'm going to put the screws back in it and that will be it for this video. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, comment if you have any questions. And yes, I probably should have cleaned this controller up a little bit. What you can do once you have it all apart, you can, uh, you know, wash the, uh, the plastics off and put it back together, which is probably what I should have done. But this is just an old controller that I got with a uh, PlayStation 4 that I repaired. So it doesn't really matter. I just wanted to make sure that the buttons themselves worked well. The controller actually did work. This just the buttons were very sloppy. And that one, the, the trigger on the one was uh, pretty mushy because of that pin being broken. But it did work, so I'm just going to leave it at that. Alrighty, well that's it for now. Thanks for watching.